The only thing, the only thing I don't get, okay, the only thing I don't get is how he managed to lure Angie out of her, out of the art room. Like, I don't think like, I don't understand that one. I don't know how he did that. It would appear we have all gathered, but it seems there are less and less of us. Oh. Less friends mean it much harder to solve mystery! Don't worry. Well, don't worry. I'm sure you've gotten a little smarter by now, Gonta. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Gonta do his best to help. Mm. I want you to graduate from super idiot level to at least Kaito idiot level. What? Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Are you okay? Uh, more importantly, are you okay, Kaito? Ah. Yeah, I'm feeling better now. But wow, Monkey Roll sure does pack a punch. I don't know. It's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to worry about our dwindling numbers. Only dipshits have died so far. That being said, I know it's a tall order, but try to use your brains next time so I don't have to use mine. Booyah! These golden brain cells of mine are a gift to the entire world. Unacceptable. It's as though every time you open your mouth, you become less likable. Rest in peace. <laughs> Whatever she says, that <laughs> makes me laugh. Tua, please. Please lend us your power. But it may be difficult for us to rely on Atua, considering what happened to Angie, whom Atua loved most of all. Well, you know. She shouldn't have relied on Atua in the first place. But seriously, it's kind of funny seeing a robot believe in God, especially also... a Tua. S so what? Robots can believe in God? Indeed. Actually, before I even met Angie, I had a similar experience. Hearing voices, I mean. <laughs> you might call it an inner voice. It tells me what to do whenever I'm in trouble. Got a minute? How long are you going to say that for? A Tua and ghosts don't matter right now. Jeez. Yeah, the trial this time is going to be rough. We got caught in Monokuma's trap. Huh? His trap? That's right. He probably made the fourth floor so scary on purpose to prevent me from investigating. I'm right already. No, he didn't. Yeah. Yeah, there's no way. Hey, so. Sh Shuichi, say something. Huh? What should I say? All right. You are guilty. Guilty. Mm. Why did the seance fail? I never did figure out why. See, he's still more interested in that than the case. Damn. This trial is going to be rough, since I couldn't do any investigating. <laughs> I respected Angie and took her so much since the moment we were met. Shut up! Shut up! Nothing's going to be solved by crying about it. He wasn't really oh. crying. Yeah. <laughs> Besides, that was a lie, wasn't it? It's a lie. Yep, you guys have me figured out already, so there's no point in me keeping up the act. Gigi never changes, no matter what situation he's in. Listen up! Try Oh, yeah, same thing as always. Please wait. It's true, though I do not know if I can attribute it to God per se. I can hear an inner voice guiding me when I don't know what to do. I can't explain why, but I believe that voice will lead me to hope, as long as I listen to it. On your knees! Sure, why the fuck is a robot talking to about God anyway? It's unseemly. You're so dumb. That inner voice is probably just a radio or something, like in taxis and stuff. That is not funny. It was unwise of me to confide in you all. I'm kind of interested in that voice. Mm. Gonta do his best to help. I know, Gonta. Gonta, good boy. Sorry, he may go. Uh, so in the end, the culprit really was. No, 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 it's nothing. We can talk about it once the trial starts. Okay. But two and ghosts don't matter right now. The culprit is among us. See, the way I see it is, is like, People are going to somehow, people are going to either do one of two things. They're going to suspect Himiko, or they're going to suspect that, that uh, Tenko is the one who murdered Angie because Angie, Angie and her weren't getting along. I'm betting. Or they're going to blame Kibo because he has the ability to see in the dark. 
or not see in the dark, but uses flashlight eyes. Whatever. As usual, walk toward the elevator in silence. As soon as we remaining survivors stepped on board, we descended. Perhaps it was because there were fewer of us, the elevator seemed to move faster. And so we fell faster and faster, downward into the black. The elevator stopped, and just like always, the doors parted slowly. The light that shines on us from the other side, the bright light of our future, or is it? Boy, they look really depressed. Must be because there's even less participants now. Don't say they look sad. You'll make Mana damn sad. <laughs> as much as I'd love to keep hearing the adorable back and forth. Let's hurry up and get this started. How last, the class trial will begin. I hope you enjoy it to your heart's content. The third class trial is about to begin. Angie Yanaga, the ultimate artist. She created the Ultimate Academy Student Council to try to prevent the killing game. Then Tenko Chabashira, the ultimate Aikido master. She hated men, but I knew that she hated this terrible killing game even more. The two, the two who were killed were both trying to stop the killing. And who was the one who killed them? Was it one person? <gasps> Everyone on this page is still alive! <laughs> Two different people? We need to pin that down in this class trial. In order to live, we have to find the truth. And I will fight for it. I'll fight with truth and lies in this class trial. In an attempt to resurrect the dead, Angie is killed. During a seance to search for answers, Tenko is killed. Are the two related? The third trial begins. Alright. First of all, let me see what skills I can buy. This one's so good, it costs so much though. But I don't really like the, the abilities I unlocked for Kokichi or Angie, so... Hmm... Let's do, let's do Neural Liberation. All right. All right, all right let's, let's do this, let's go. Oh, I forgot to say. <laughs> hey all you cool cats, it's Mina, and welcome back to another episode of Rampa V3, Killing Harmony, and we are about to go into the third class trial. So let's get it going. Class trial, in session. Oh, no, no, no. I don't, I don't, I don't care. I don't care. You've said this every single time. Smiles, <laughs> everyone! It's showtime! Let's get this crazy awesome trial underway! If you guys want to hear Monokuma say that, you can watch the beginning Sorry, of... everyone. I don't think I'm going to be much help this time. <laughs> you can watch the beginning of the other trials. Because of Monokuma's disruptions, I couldn't do a thorough investigation. I can tell Monokuma is overcompensating to hide his self-consciousness. <laughs> Next time, spend less time fixing your hair and more time investigating, spaceman! <laughs> Shut up! I don't need to hear some comedy act from you two weirdos. Who did it? Who killed Angie and Tenko? Do not let your emotions hasten your judgment. There may be two killers. So, our other culprit might not be one of us here. Hmm? What do you mean? Yeah, see, she's trying to suggest that Tenko was the one who killed, uh, Angie, which I don't believe. The transfer student. Oh no, the transfer student, of course. That's not gonna happen. That's so BS. Don't get me started. <laughs> Angie and Tenko into the glee. No. 
Stop it! Stop making stuff up! Say something, Shuichi. It'll be a mess if this keeps going on. Is it even possible for a revived corpse to be the culprit? Well, in the interest of being thorough, I should clear things up here. No, because they didn't- I don't think they even did the, uh, the- the, th the ceremony correctly. Effigies hung upside down, I believe, is the wrong one, right? This crime was committed by the recently deceased. Wait, it they might be the Necronomicon. Two of our classmates. No! So, ritual did work? No. Who was resurrected, I wonder? Angie did say she was gonna bring Rantaro back. Rantaro was resurrected. The culprit is the late Rantaro Amami. Please stop it! <laughs> this isn't about believing the reviving the dead. I have to focus on their statements. Hmm. Were all those statements correct? This no. This crime was committed by the recently deceased. Rich No. Oh, Jesus. That's wrong. <laughs> Had words pop up after I broke the words. <laughs> I don't think Angie's ritual succeeded. According to the Necronomicon Monokuma showed us, you have to burn the Necronomicon in the ritual. After preparing the effigy, burn this Necronomicon to ashes. Use caution, be mindful of carbon monoxide poisoning. Sprinkle the ashes on the effigy and repeat the name of the deceased three times. If Angie's ritual had succeeded, the book would have been gone. So she must have been killed before the ritual was complete, since the book was still intact. Then, going to think Rantaro probably not culprit. Oh, I guess you're right. Well, duh. There's no way a dead person could... Resurrect. <laughs> now hold on a second. I can't let that comment stand. Sure, everybody knows that you can't bring the dead back to life. But it's easy at the Ultimate Academy as long as you use the Necronomicon. <sighs> what are you talking about? There's no way that's possible. There's no way. But it's true. I never lie about motives. But you lie about other things, right? Daddy said so, so he can't be wrong. Raising the dead is totally possible. Man, I can't believe you guys wasted such a perfectly good motive. You should have let me use it to bring Monodum back to life. Monodum is still alive, though. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I wouldn't waste a resurrection on Monodem's right corpse. You're on the threshold of Are you the next one going to die? Oh? So resurrecting the dead was actually possible this whole time? There's no way it's possible! There's no way that could happen, idiots. Monokuma is trying to confuse us. Oh, Angie's got the little halo and, and wings. I just noticed that. Let's hurry up and find out who the Blackened is. If our transfer student isn't the culprit, then blame falls to one of us. Who? Who did it? Step aside, Half Pint! I'll handle this! I don't know about Tenko, but I'm pretty fucking sure Keo murdered Angie! What? Don't play dumb with me, creep show! I already know what happened! Okay. used a katana to kill Angie. And it was found in Keo's research lab. That's Which true. Means you, Keo, automatically suspicious. But anyone could have taken that katana, you see. So that rusty katana was the murder weapon. You were the only one who cared about that thing, Keo. I did not care about some katana. Just admit it, you shit-eating worm. He did care about it. Broke in and murdered the fuck out of Angie. 
Corky, are really the culprit? Does the story fit the facts of the case? I should think about it from the beginning. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, like, one second. I need to read, because... Alright. No, the front door was locked. Okay, so that's what it is. The front door is locked. Whether Kyo had a key or not, Angie still would have let him in her lab. Damn it! Okay. She said broke in. So that rusty katana was the murder weapon. You were the only one who killed. That's Samuki's account. Oh, she would not have unlocked the door unless the student council asked her to. Okay. There we go. That's wrong. No, Kyo would not have been able to enter Angie's lab. I, no, I, I still think he did it. Isn't that right, Tsumugi? Yeah. Before Angie locked herself up in her research lab, she said she wasn't going to open up for anyone but student council members. And Kyo is not a member. She wouldn't have opened the door for him. Kyo couldn't have killed Angie even if he wanted to. I had no desire to kill her in the first place. So whoever killed Angie must have been one of the student council members, yeah? I, I was doing a bit to lead you to the right answer. Can't believe you actually got it. Oh, how clever. You can just ignore her, Gonta. The remaining student council members are Gonta, Kibo, Sumugi, and Himiko. Well, it can't be Himiko. She was besties with Angie. I trust their friendship. You guys do too, right? Yeah, of course. Can we trust their friendship so readily? Obviously. Let's believe in them. That trims our list of suspects down to three. Gonta, Samugi, and Kibo. Yep, yep. The culprit is one of those three people. No. You mean one of those two people. Because a robot ain't people, Jack. I will let that remark slide. Anyway, aren't these accusations just a tad too hasty? What else? The culprit should confess already. Gonta, Kibo, or Samugi. Well... No, not Gonta. Gonta would never kill Angie. Yes, Gonta's a gentleman. You shouldn't suspect either of us. Hey, stick up for me, too. Gonta definitely not hurt anyone. Torture Gonta if you don't believe. Torture might be a bit too far, but Gonta and I aren't the culprit. <laughs> and I'm not the culprit either. Jeez. Gonta I'm not, not the culprit. Not the culprit. Ah, this one. This one's my worst. Well. Alright. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me, let me check. There was Smoogie's. Wait, we don't need Smoogie's testimony. It's not going to be that anymore. The front door. Okay. 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 I didn't know robots told such boring lies. But it's definitely not me. Is that a robophobic remark? <laughs> Several suspicious statements, but one is obviously inconsistent. I'll listen carefully, sort the statements in my head, and find the answer. Oh, I must consider other possibilities. Surely there must be other suspects. Well, then who did? That's utterly impossible. It's utterly impossible. Not just anyone could open that door. Not just anyone could open that door. Only student council members. Okay, this one, right? Yeah. I heard it. Hmm. 
No, it wasn't just student council members that could have opened that lab door. Hmm. What was it you said earlier about Kyo opening the door, Shuichi? Unless you're a student council member, you can't enter Angie's lab, right? I was referring to Kyo. He couldn't have done it, but you could have. Because I saw you open the classroom lock by hitting it. Yeah, yeah, we don't need to watch the cutscene of him <laughs> picking the door. We already oh, saw that. That happened? I totally forgot. So you're going to pretend you don't remember, huh? <laughs> Quit glaring at me like that. Of course I remember. Yeah, I did it. I killed Angie. No, you didn't. You liar. Hmm. Wait, what? What did you just say? I picked the lock to her lab, snuck into the room, and then, wham! Killed Angie. The culprit was me, all along. What? What, what are you saying? Is this some kind of joke? Nah, no joke. I thought that if I confessed, I could atone for my sins. And it helped. I feel so much better. Whew! Wait, so Kokichi really is culprit? No, he's lying. No, he's lying. I think. Maybe? <laughs> he's lying. I'm certain of it. No, no. Definitely not a lie. I killed Angie. Shouldn't you guys believe the culprit when they confess? Then let me ask you, culprit. How did you lock the room? Huh? It's the same as opening it. You pick the door closed from the outside? No, that doesn't make sense. Huh? What does it make sense? Can't you lock a door by picking it? I actually don't know that answer. I don't think so. Maybe, but that's not how the culprit locked the room. They used a different method. Yeah, a method I'm still trying to figure out. What different method? Yeah, Mumbles. Use your big boy voice and explain yourself. Uh, there were two doors to the classroom, and the one locked last was... The back door. That's it! The back door. That's how they made this a locked room mystery. The back door had a sliding lock, yes. How was it locked from the outside? You know, whoever did this didn't have to go through so much trouble to lock this door because I think they used like the like the the swinging body to like like hit it shut with the the back of the blade, but I think they could have just had like a string, like you know, some like fishing line or something and just like wrapped it around the lock and then after they closed the door, just like yank on the string until it closed. It might not have worked perfectly, but I think after a couple of tries, you would have been able to lock this door. I don't think it would have required so much effort. The culprit used a certain tool. The tool that the culprit used to lock the sliding lock from the outside was... Oh my god. Really? Okay. My least favorite minigame this I see it The gold leaf katana that was stabbed in the Kaede's effigy The culprit used that to hit the knob of the sliding lock to lock the door So the gold leaf was on the sliding lock because because when the katana hit the lock some of the gold leaf rubbed off on it I would like to see this in animation right now, please. The gold leaf on that katana did peel rather easily. Hmm. That evidence rings a bell. Specifically, a school bell. Huh? Are you talking about a different school? What school was it? Hope's Peak Academy. Now, now, that doesn't matter anymore. Let's not dwell on the past. 
sliding lock when the katana touched it. So that means the culprit used the katana to move the sliding lock, right? But wait, how did they move it with the katana? And from outside Angie's lab? The clue that might give us the answer is the layout of the area itself. It was an odd setup after all. The katana stabbed into the effigy. The effigies hung upside down. Angie didn't do that as part of the ritual? No. Nowhere in the Necronomicon did it say you had to hang the effigies. If it was not part of the ritual, then it must have been for a different purpose, right? To distract us from figuring out how they closed the door. A different purpose? What could that have been? Culprit somehow used the setup to lock the room. In that case, I need to know the reason behind every step of that setup. Hmm. There's no way they set off like a domino effect to like knock into each other so that way they would lock the door. I don't get it! I don't get it. If I do that, the way the culprit locked the room should be clear. I seriously don't. What turned the handle of the sliding lock? Easy, it was the blade. The katana's hilt. That's easy. Even as I'm rolling down here, I'm trying to figure out how they did this. Because my, my thinking is completely wrong. There's no way anybody used my method to close the door. And this person didn't have to do like such a difficult strategy to close this door either person worked way too hard for the store. And by someone I mean Korakio worked way too hard for the store. Okay, okay. What was done to make the katana turn the lock? The katana was stabbed in the effigy. Yeah, I don't get it. Why, though? <laughs> I really don't. I don't understand. Alright, whatever. Pick up puzzles, pieces. I don't even bother looking at the question until, like, I see that most of the box are filled with my perif. I'm too busy focused on the road. How was the effigy ma manipulated to make the katana affect the lock? I don't know. Spun? Twirled? domino effect? This is gonna be stupid. Swinging back and forth. Making it fall? No. Spinning it? Spinning it. That's it? I'm right? But I want to see this in animation. Please do not let me down here on this because I just... Can you guys even imagine this? I can't. It. The reason the culprit stuck the katana into the effigy was so that it would hit the sliding lock as the effigy spun. Effigy spun? That's right. If you spun the effigy, <gasps> the rocket was pulling oh. Then, if you let it go, the rope would unwind and the effigy would spin the other way. And of course, the katana would spin with it. I didn't even think about how, like, the the higher up it would go, they, the or that the person would, like, have spun the effigy, like, as many times. I thought they would have only done it, like, once. But, like, it makes sense when they, when you think about it from the perspective of, like, of course this person must have spun it, a, a, like, twirled it up a lot. What's what would make me have trouble believing this is this person had to also open the door and slip out 
And that would have knocked the effigy around. I see. So the culprit used the katana's counterspin to push the lock into place? The culprit simply needed to spin the effigy's rope and then swiftly leave. This would cause the spinning katana to hit the sliding lock. And thus was the back door of an empty classroom locked from the inside. Yes, that's how Angie's lab was locked. By using the effigy with a katana. A plan born from the heart of a sword traveling through the air to intercept us. Oh, but could it have moved the slide lock so easily? The sliding lock was pretty loose. A little push could move it. Or a tiny bit of string could have. Corkia, why'd you have to make this complicated? As long as the spinning katana hit the lock, we would have slid into position. Even if the culprit failed the first couple times, we could keep trying until it locked. Which is why the culprit chose to strike at nighttime as to avoid detection. Yes, since the student council prohibited anyone from walking around at nighttime. Yes. I didn't say that. In any case, I am. The culprit probably used the murder weapon for this trick. But I don't think anybody actually even obeyed that, right? Like, everybody was either on the student council or they were just disregarding it. Like, I disregarded it. Kaito was in bed, but he would have if, if, like, we would have still gone and done our training if he was feeling better. I, like, Kokichi was obviously walking around at night anyways. Korikio, I, have, I, have, I firmly believe he disregarded it. Who else was not on there? Maki and I were already disregarding it. Um, Smoogie was on there. And Mew was up by the computer. So not a single person was obeying it. <laughs> it had to have been the right lane to hit the sliding lock from the effigy. Culprit couldn't find a blade long enough in the lab, so they settled for the katana. The other effigies were only hung up, so we figured it was some kind of ceremony. That way, we wouldn't notice the lock trick. But, Kokichi did say earlier that he could have picked the lock closed. I don't want to completely ignore that possibility. But I can't imagine the culprit would have done all this just for a distraction. If that's the case, then Kokichi's confession earlier was actually... A lie. Seriously? You fucking lied again? <laughs> yeah! Cough it up, Kokichi! Oh, man. You guys got me. Okay, I'm not the culprit. You're telling the truth this time, right? I want to say I'm lying, but I'm not. Why did you say you were the culprit? I wanted to lure the culprit out. If I claimed to be the culprit, then the real culprit would agree as well. You get me? And if they pressured me to confess, then that would have looked mighty suspicious. Sheesh. Darn it. It didn't go my way because Shuichi butted into my plan. You and your fucking lies! No, I'm pretty sure he was telling the truth there, too. Okay, I'll start right now. Alright, so who's the asshole who set up this locked room mystery? You. I can't hold it up anymore. What's the matter? You going soft on me now? Who made the locked room mystery doesn't matter since anyone could have done it. That's true. Don't you even understand something as basic as that, you filthy cum dumpster? Cum <laughs> <laughs> dumpster! That's what you get for calling Kaede that. Finally called me a cum dumpster! You deserve that after what you called Kaede. What should we talk about now? We must focus not on the locked room, but on who entered Angie's lab. Only one of the student council members, or Kokichi, could have gained entry. Therefore, the culprit must be among their number. That leaves us with four suspects. Sumugi, Gonta, Kibo, and Kokichi. 
Don't forget Himiko. She's also a part of the student council. Doesn't matter if she was besties with Angie, she's still a suspect. That contradicts what you said earlier, which I can prove using my recording function. <laughs> it's fine. It's just a waste of time. Mm -hmm. A suspect? I, I never kill Angie! So, calling all suspects, what should we discuss next? I want to hear everyone's opinion. What would you say to get yourself off the suspect list? Why are you trying to lead the debate? You're a suspect too. Silence, outsider! Only the suspect rangers are allowed to speak. <laughs> suspect rangers? I agree. Those under suspicion should explain themselves thoroughly. We might catch them with their pants down! Anyway, I want to ask the suspect rangers. What should we talk about? What should we say to get ourselves off the suspect list? Well, guys, I want to hear what you think. Um, that's sort of a difficult question, you know? Gonta not smart enough to know answer to that. Yes, it is difficult to formulate a logical response to that question. Not articulate with words, huh? Don't you guys want to prove your innocence? They are all innocent. They don't trust you one bit, and I don't blame them. You're probably plotting. Why did Tinko have to die? Oh, I'm sorry. I want to know what happened to Angie, too, but... Can we talk about Tinko's case now and not just Angie's? <laughs> I got you exactly where I wanted, Himiko. Um, what do you mean? The two victims could have been killed by two separate murderers, you know. So we need to find the first blackened responsible for the first victim. We gotta figure out who killed Angie. Until we solve Angie's case, Tenko's case is meaningless. Did you suggest that to waste our time? It's color? not meaningless! Himiko? Tenko's death was meaningless? How dare you! Poor Tenko! How could you do this to her? Himiko. Himiko, stop it with your crappy lies. Lies? Everything you said is total BS. You didn't give two shits about Tenko when she was alive. But now you're like, oh no, poor Tenko, after she's dead. Come on, really? Kokichi, enough! No, it's okay. It's no surprise he'd think that. I know I ignored Tenko before. That's why I'm so upset now. I should have faced Tenko. Work things out with her while she was still alive. And now it's too late. I can't complain to her or thank her. I know it's it's gonna be okay. It's too late. Yeah, seriously. It's way too late to realize that now. Our only option is to face her death head on. Yeah. Face her death? Here we go. I understand what you're going through. So I'm gonna help you out. Let's work together to find the truth. I'm not gonna let anyone say her death didn't matter. Kaito. All right. I'll put a silencing curse on whoever calls Tango's death meaningless. The name of the curse is... Death Curse! I am... Um, suppose being dead would silence someone to the good. <laughs> Listen up! All you guys are going to help out, too. Abandoning someone who died and only thinking about your own survival. That's just as bad as a hit and run. I won't forgive something so messed up. Tenko was our friend. Gonta want to know why she died, too. I already told you that's so unnecessary. We're getting sidetracked here. No, even if it was a different culprit, we need to know how Tenko died. If we don't find out who killed her, we won't be able to work together. Not now, not ever. Even if this trial isn't for her, 
In order for us to survive, we need to get to the bottom of Tenko's death. I also feel that I also feel very strongly that figuring out Tenko's murder, aka Korakio, <laughs> will help us figure out Angie's death. Like we'll be able to piece together because I'm willing to bet she got attacked. She got attacked while while Korakio was in in the middle room because we found that dried blood. I'm, I'm like blood doesn't dry that fast after someone dies. So that has to be her blood. Right? So that means we need to do this. Not just to survive this trial, but so we can keep going and live on. Kaito. Finally, you noticed. Jeez, you're so slow. Huh? Did Kokichi want us to notice? Don't listen to this crap. We haven't decided whether there were two different culprits yet. Let us talk about Tenko's case then. Perhaps that will provide us a clue. Clue to getting you blackened. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I'm, I'm excited because this is probably the first person that I really, really, really wanted to die. <laughs> and, I'm, and I was like, he's so creepy and he's definitely going to be a murderer. So I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm excited for this. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell in my voice how excited I am to get him. Get him. I can't wait for your execution. Not wrong, but I don't mind going over Tenko's case. But that what? But that wasn't an abrupt change of topic. Was that intentional? So what are we talk about first? For now, let's see if we can narrow down the list of suspects. Tancrotch probably got killed during the séance, so everyone there's suspicious. I agree. <laughs> People who attended the seance. Uh, this one. That's it. Okay, <laughs> I was reading through the names very quickly. <laughs> it was me, Kyo, Himiko, and Kokichi. So those four are the culprits. Oh, Himiko still culprit? Well, that's probably just a coinky dink. The most suspicious out of the four is really. Kia, he suggested the whole seance idea. I agree. <laughs> True, I may have suggested it, but I explained the procedure beforehand, yes. If we all knew of it before the murder, then we are all equally suspicious. Well, I suppose, but... In addition, the seance wasn't entirely in my control either. I was not the one who selected the room we performed it in. It was Himiko. See, you're doing exactly what I thought you would. You little sneaky sneak. You little sneaky, sneaky snake. I got you. However, there are three empty rooms. Which one shall we use? Um, the middle room. The middle room's always best for stuff like this. Very well. I shall begin the preparations at once. Also, we should not limit our suspects to only those who participated in the seance. The empty room had a point of entry from outside, you see. A point of entry from outside. He must be referring to that hole. There! Okay. You're talking about under the floor, right? Huh? Under the floor? Yes, there's a crawl space under the floor a person can move through. There was also a hole that connected it to the neighboring room. If the culprit used the hole, they could have entered and exited the seance room. If we consider that possibility, then there is another suspect. Another suspect? Who? He's gonna blame Kibo. It's appearing before me. Oh, I can see it clearly. The true identity of Tenko's killer. Q. 
Incubus flashlight. The culprit sneaked in during the seance by crawling under the floor. But it was pitch black during the seance. How could they even see if they were under the floor? Because it wasn't dark under the floor. You see, our villain had a light. Light? You mean candle? I mean, Kibo's flashlight function. Huh? Now, hold on a second. Kibo could have used that function. Hold on. To get under the floor and sneak into the empty room during the seance. I said, hold on a second. He used his robot functions to commit the murders. Hold on a second! It's true that with a little light, you can move around under the floor. But is that possible? The culprit, the culprit sneaked in during Page the child, chance. marker stone, loose floorboard, hole in the corner. Hole in the corner. Whoa, 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 wait. Hole in the corner. It would, it would be too bright, wouldn't it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I don't think the culprit could have used a light while under the floor. There was a hole in the corner of the room. If a light were used, it would have leaked through and we would have seen it. When we did the seance, the room was definitely pitch black. So a light was not shined under the floor, which means you cannot claim I am the culprit. Jeez, here I thought this would be the case where the murder could only be done by a robot. You have accused me of being the culprit more than once now, simply because I am a robot. My status as a robot does not mean I am capable of performing superhuman feats. My vision is somewhat poor, and I only possess average physical strength and intelligence. <laughs> all right, all right, you made your point. God, now I feel sort of bad for you. I neither want nor need your pity. Poor Kibo. Not with the flashlight, it's way too bright. <laughs> it would have been difficult to move around under the floor in that pitch black darkness. Maybe the floor and the hole have nothing to do with this case. No. Then why was floorboard under Tango lined up funny? Gonta think that was so culprit could stab Tango from under floor. I just don't understand how he set up this murder. Ooh, nice observation, Gonta. Are you finally getting used to the class trials? Uh-huh. Thank you. <laughs> don't say it like that. You're better off not being used to this kind of stuff. Maybe they marked Tinko with glowing paint and looked for that. No. That'd let the culprit find her. Then they could stab her through the floorboards. I like how we're referencing Danganronpa 2. Boy, that sounds really familiar <laughs> too. But I'm just gonna ignore it. Her corpse didn't have any trace of glowing paint though. Oh, yeah. So then, why was that floorboard loose? The loose floorboard was the one under Tenko, right? If the culprit used it while she was still alive, she'd totally notice. Who fucking cares? Fussing over that won't get us closer to the culprit! We shouldn't dismiss this line of inquiry, however. Instead of butting our heads against this, how about we concentrate on another issue? What other issue? Perhaps first, we should figure out how and when exactly Tenko was killed. During the middle of the seance. When? So not during seance? Tenko was in the metal cage for the whole seance, wasn't she? How could someone have gotten to her there? Maybe the culprit killed her before she went under the metal cage. Impossible. That's not possible. She was alive at that point. We've done this flashback twice already. Please, no. <laughs> yes. She was unmistakably alive when the seance began. 
Hmm. That was right before we blew out the candles. But when the light came back... The floorboard was removed at that point. So it's likely she was already dead then. So she was killed when the room was dark? But she was inside Cage, right? I'm going to think it impossible to kill her then. But she wasn't killed when the room was dark. It was a different time. No, she was. A different time? How the fuck should I know? You figure it out, shitheads. Huh? Since Gonta said it was impossible, I'm proposing an alternate theory. Now hurry up and think! If you want to make my golden brain tingle, start circle jerking your limp dick brains! She had to be killed in, in the middle. I don't know what bullet I'm loading in, though. Uh... Got killed. Iron cage. It wasn't during the seance. No, it had to have been. Not have been done at any other time. She was under the cage the whole time. She was dead when the cage was lifted. <laughs> what about moment cage was lifted? <sighs> like that. When cage lifted, culprit stabbed Tango real fast. So fast, no one saw. No. <laughs> White sheet. You lifted the cage. White sheet. I'm, I'm betting that was it. Then obviously Himiko is the culprit. No. There's no to the down. What an idiot. Tenko not being killed during the seance? That might not be impossible. There's no evidence for it. When Tenko got killed, it wasn't during the seance. It could not have been done. Hold on, let me triple check. Let me triple check, because it's either the white sheet or the cage. Let's do the iron cage. Nope. Okay, so it's 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 I was wrong. It's it's the white sheet. There we go. That's wrong. No, it wasn't possible to kill her the moment the cage was lifted. Because the inside of the white cloth had Tenko's blood on it. That cloth was removed before the cage was lifted. If Tenko was stabbed then, there wouldn't be blood on the cloth. What? But how could my golden brain be wrong when it felt so... so right? Because you're an idiot. The only possibility is that Tenko was killed during the sale. I got your remodel right here! What? No, it's still wrong to think that Tenko was killed during the seance. What? I'm gonna prove it right now. My golden brain is gonna go all out! died after the seance. It happened when the sheet was lifted. That was the moment the culprit chose to stab the fuck out of Tango through the cage. They stuck the thin blade through the gaps of the cage. And that clean white sheet got stained blood red. But the weapon was a sickle. Only the blade could have fit through the gaps. The blade's all you need. If you stick the blade through Okay, the blade's all you need. Wait, 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 wait. Let me see. What is she gonna say here? Gap in the cage. It'd be long enough to reach Tenko. Sitting in there with her neck all exposed. Oh. She wasn't that far from the cage's gap. In which case, the person who lifted the sheet is the culprit. And that's none other than Keo! There's to be a hole in Mew's logic somewhere. All I have to do is show evidence that will counter the Mew's claims. The blade's all you need. But... I thought 
thought the I thought we were gonna show like the white sheet because the white sheet doesn't have a hole, but it has the blood. But I don't get that option. Who's floorboard? Who's floorboard? Who's floorboard? I don't understand. It's not loose before the seance. Iron cage. Three feet high and six three feet wide. Okay, it's not that. I'm she was sitting normally while she was in the cage. If you got a problem with that, better come up with a better explanation. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm stupid. Sickle under the floor. Tenko's last moments. Tenko's last moments. Crouch position. Injury on in the back of her neck was deep, but probably not enough to kill her immediately. It'd be long enough to reach Tenko. Sitting in there with her. I'm guessing this one. Nope. Ah. Okay, that one's it. Is it really? I, I still think the white sheet would have been a better thing to use here. Tenko wasn't sitting down inside the cage. She was bent over with her forehead against the marker stone. And the cage itself was about three feet tall. The sickle's blade was too short to reach Tenko while she was in that position. I messed up again? How could this happen? I am so embarrassed. No worries, Mew. Everyone already knows you're an embarrassment to the human race. <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> Oh. How, how embarrassing! If Shuichi is right, then it's impossible for Tenko to have been killed through the cage. She couldn't have been killed during the seance since she was in the cage, right? If she was killed then, the cloth over the cage would have been pierced. Not during the seance or from below the floor. Then it's impossible, isn't it? <sighs> yeah, for a living person. <laughs> what if Angie's spirit killed Tenko? What are you talking about? Th th that's not possible. We don't know that. Some things are impossible for a human, but not for a spirit. Don't say stupid stuff like that. S screw spirits. Stop that now. Angie's spirit killed Tenko? Why? Himiko? Why would Angie's spirit kill Tenko? Don't even follow this line of logic. What if Tenko killed Angie, and then Angie's spirit came back for revenge? Like I said, that's impossible! Spirits can't be culprits! Then explain how the culprit killed Tenko under these impossible circumstances. I can't explain it either, admittedly. I have no idea. Well, uh... You can't explain, can you? Only a spirit could have done that. Wait, I know. What if the culprit was hiding inside the cage? If they were in there, they could have stabbed Tenko during the seance. No, if there was someone else in the cage, we would have I noticed. I agree with Kaito. The culprit could have been inside the cage. You do? Nonsense. There was no space in the cage for the culprit to hide. Okay, if he had the sickle on him, if he had the sickle on him, he could have, <clears throat> he could have used that board to create a gap so that way he could reach under and stab her in the neck, right? And then throw away the sickle. Is that how he did it? Maybe the culprit wouldn't need to hide in the first place. What? Also, the culprit could have killed her in the cage at any time. I think you know what I'm getting at, right? The they she's referring to. Tenko? I believe Maki is referring to Tenko herself. What did you say? Are you saying Tenko is the culprit? 
he committed suicide. S suicide? If she committed suicide, it would explain a lot of things we didn't figure out. No, I don't think that's it. She volunteered to be in the cage and then stabbed herself during the sands. It wouldn't matter how dark the room was. But the sickle she was stabbed with was under the floor, right? If Tanko had stabbed herself, wouldn't the sickle still be inside the cage? Uh, oh my god. Mew actually said something smart. <laughs> Perhaps that explains why the floorboard was removed. After stabbing herself with the sickle, she threw it underneath the floor. So she took off the floorboard to get rid of the sickle? Yes, that makes sense to Gota. That's not it. Well, it doesn't make sense to me. That's right, Himiko. There's no reason for Tanko to commit suicide. That's exactly right. Maybe I wasn't too far off with the theory I had earlier. You know, about Tenko killing Angie. Yeah? Because Tenko and Angie were fighting for your attention, right? Hey, Angie! When did you brainwash Himiko? Tenko's pent-up frustration led her to commit such an atrocity. Her conscience couldn't handle it any... What? I didn't mean to click that. I'm... This is wrong. But if she was going to kill herself, why do it during the seance? Mm -mm. She wanted to hide the truth of her suicide. Really? Why? There could only be one reason to hide it in the killing game, right? It's to take us down with her. Take us down? She wanted us to pick the wrong answer during the class trial. So she could bring us all down. She wanted us to die with her. See, so the thing is, is I think Kokichi knows who did this. And I think he's just messing with all of us right now. Okay, well, she probably just wanted Himiko to die with her, but still. But what are you saying? Himiko is like that. You're right, Himiko. Hold me. Keep your chin up and fit live life facing forward. Survive with me and everyone else. What if all of that was just a lie? That wasn't a lie. A lie? Wait. We should believe Tenko's last words. The true terror of class trials is that you shouldn't believe everything said. Himiko, you said that Tenko would never do anything like that. But how can you be so sure? Did you guys actually know each other? People keep all sorts of secrets. Like Maki. She hid the fact that she's a cold-blooded killer. Is it wise of us to trust other people wholeheartedly in this kind of situation? Tenko wasn't somebody who hid things, though. She was pretty open. <laughs> Even her hatred of men was like, that's ah, open book. Jeez, you're such a naive dude. Naive? We're all just people, you know? Of course we're gonna have some secrets. What matters is whether there's any malice behind them. People can lie about how malicious their hidden secrets really are. Well, duh. It's impossible to know for sure what others are thinking. That's why it all comes down to whether or not you believe in yourself. If you get betrayed, it's not their fault. It's your fault for believing in them. That's why I believed in Maki Roll, because I wanted to believe in her. Just because you're acting all cool doesn't mean you get to skip training. <laughs> hey, come on. Don't you think you're being a little too strict? Well, we come from different backgrounds. So for now, let's agree to disagree. No one's ever called me my new before. And from Kaito? Seriously? <laughs> Whether or not I believe, my heart can't reach Kiko anymore. But I want to believe in her. She wouldn't commit suicide. She wouldn't try to take us down. She wouldn't, especially not you, Himiko. That's what I want to believe. Me too. Gonta, no can believe Tenko commits suicide. But if Tenko did commit suicide, that would answer all of our questions. I believe there's a much simpler answer to this. If you insist we believe in Tenko, then provide a reason to do so. 
proper reason. All right, I'll give you a reason. Is there a reason? Yes, there is. Will you trust me, Maki? If it turns out I'm wrong, you can blame me all you like. But for now, I need you to trust in my detective work. I don't believe Tenko would kill herself because of what she said. Okay, everyone, I'll see you guys after the seance. She said, see you guys after. I doubt she had a sudden change of heart. Just because we don't know how she was killed doesn't mean that it was suicide. We shouldn't be satisfied with that. If we keep thinking, we'll find the truth. And that means we have to believe in Tenko. I'll make them all believe. Am I telling my lie here? Tenko's last moments. Okay, whoa, 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 is Tenko's last moments? Hold on. Tenko's last moments. Best explanation. Loose floorboard. Plan was to take us down with her, so she hid her true intentions. Tenko's not that kind of person. But if Tenko did commit suicide, it would explain how she died during the sand. She could have secretly brought the sickle and then stabbed herself with it. Finally, with the last of her strength, she threw the sickle underneath the floor. All the pieces fit. Everyone thinks that Tenko committed suicide, but only because they're latching onto the easiest answer. To get out of this, I need to make them think their suicide theory wouldn't work. So far. So I have to lie about something. So I need to lie about how she... Hold on. I'm guessing I need to lie about how she can't move. Okay. Finally, with the last of us. There. I only feel the truth. There we go. That's it. <laughs> Tenko couldn't have thrown the sickle under the floor because she died instantly. Instantly. Her death might not have been instant, but she couldn't have gone forward before she bled out. I'm certain of it. My investigation determined that she died instantly. She knows I lied. What's your opinion, Maki? I'd like to hear from someone who specializes in murder. Maki. You're right. I completely forgot about that important detail. <gasps> she went along with me! Maki. Tenko died instantly. What? As an assassin, I specialize in killing my target swiftly. I have no doubt that Tenko was killed immediately. <laughs> Words of a true killer. Pretty sure we can believe everything she said. Thank you, Maki. How could you forget that, Maki Roll? You better apologize to Julie. <laughs> Please don't make her. Excuse me? It's okay, Kaito, really. No apology necessary. Anyway. Tanko died so suddenly that she couldn't have gotten rid of the sickle. Knowing that, the theory that she killed herself just doesn't fit, correct? Just like I thought, Tanko would have committed suicide. Ah. Thank goodness, Himiko. Which means someone definitely killed Tanko during the seance. Yes. The suicide was considered because we could not determine how she was killed. No, there must have been a way. We're gonna figure it out! Did any of the participants witness anything peculiar during the seance? Yes. If you know something, please speak up. It could be the key to solving this mystery. Not a bad idea. We should remember what happened at the seance. Let me try to remember. I'm sure there's something. I need some kind of clue that will help me solve this mystery. 
There was that noise. That noise. Come on, man. Sound during seance. Screw that other sh stuff. Oh, stop. No. Here we are. <laughs> no, he got away. <laughs> I'm more concerned about how dark it got in there. I mean, it was totally pitch black. It got My away. To relight the candles. Moving along the walls was seriously tough. I don't care. Did anything? Blah 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 blah. No no no. no. Oh my god, I got it on the last split second. <laughs> Himiko, you think that something fell because of that sound you heard, right? Yes. Yeah, that was crazy. idea what it was I don't think the floorboard would have made that sound would it the sound was pretty loud it did seem like something hit the floorboards unless it was like like Cory Keo's like foot hitting that that board hard or or whatever I just I don't know what would make a sound that obnoxiously loud hmm Loud sound, like something hit the floorboards. Maybe that sound had something to do with the other thing that happened in the dark. What was the sound that caused the loose floorboard? This is it. Yeah. I think the floorboard coming off. But I don't know how he did this. I really don't. I'm still confused. That floorboard came loose at some point during the seance, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That was the sound of an intense impact. If the impact is that intense, then it could have loosened the floorboard. That is true. It would have had to be a strong impact to make that sound. What is it? What could it possibly be? All right then, let's go with that. We all gotta put our heads together now. Hmm. So what made the floorboard come loose? Judging from the sound, there must have been considerable force. Someone who participated in the seance. Maybe that person tore off the floorboard. That wouldn't make such a loud crashing sound. Maybe the wooden statue fell over. That sounds right. That statue was still on top of the cage. Culprit hide under floor. Then stood up with such might. But we already said there was no one under the floor. Someone must have stomped through the floor. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. Screw everything else, that's it. <laughs> stomped. Yes. But explain how this the floorboard can loose because someone stomped on I don't know how this killed Summer though! How? I don't get it! Did I <laughs> The way we placed everything up, I don't understand how the floorboard could have, like, possibly caused, like, a sickle to hit her. Underneath everything. That's impossible. Maybe the sickle was somehow placed. Uh, uh, 
Maybe when Corikio brought the, 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 the cloth. Maybe he had the sickle in the cloth as well. And he had the cloth and the sickle placed up against the cage in such a way that the cloth was hiding the sickle. And then when he stomped on the, the floorboard, it jerked her, her head up. So that way she would have like had the back of her neck hit the sickle somehow. Like enough that it would have killed her. And maybe when he went to retrieve everything, he somehow threw the sickle through the gap or hole or something. I don't know. That's the best excuse I can come up with. The floorboards fit perfect. Going to make sure first time we go to empty room. When we first saw the room, yes. But when I looked again during the investigation, one of the cross pieces supporting the floorboards was cut off. After examining the cut, I concluded that it must have been done deliberately. Someone? You mean the culprit, right? Why'd they do that? What did the culprit stand to gain by cutting the cross piece? Why don't we ask you, Karakio? What do they stand to gain? That's the question. To solve this case, I'll need to think carefully about the cross piece and floorboard. Tenko's body was at one end of the loose floorboard, and the cross piece that had been cut was on the other end of the floorboard. The unsupported part was outside the cage, so it could have been stomped on. Only one of the cross pieces was cut. The other two were intact. One of them was right under Tenko. And the other one was in the center, right about where the edge of the cage was. What was the culprit attempting to achieve by stomping on the floorboard? Come on. Think. Come on. Think. Uh, jeez. This is a big word. Uh... What happened when the loose floorboard was stepped on? I don't know, let's hit a letter. S. What was- what happened when the loose floorboard was- s s I, I think I see the word saw? I can make saw. 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 S Wait. Is it... is it seesaw? What other word can I make here? Seesaw... I see a lot of F's. Nope, not it doesn't begin with an F. Seesaw T? No. Seesaw... Seesaw... Oh, it's effect, isn't it? It's effect! Seesaw effect! Okay. Oh my god, I feel so stupid. I'm sorry, you guys. Seesaw effect. God. I'm sorry, I'm stupid. That's right. The floorboard might have been used as a seesaw. The cross piece at one end of the floorboard had been cut off. The other two cross pieces holding up that board were close to the cage. Meaning, if you were to apply force to the end of the floorboard with no cross piece. The next cross piece would act as a fulcrum to turn the floorboard into a lever. A lever capable of lifting up Tenko's entire body. Her whole body lifted up? Yeah, that sounds like a seesaw, all right. But why bother lifting Tenko's body? They couldn't have killed Tenko like that. Unless they used the sickle. That's exactly it. Using the seesaw trick, it was possible to kill Tenko with a sickle. Huh? How? In order for the culprit to kill Tenko with a seesaw trick, the placement of the sickle is the most important factor. 
floorboard seesaw of a cage and the blood on the white fabric. What conclusion can I draw from this? There's only one place the sickle could have been that is consistent with the evidence. Uh, the top of the cage? That's it! The sickle was at the top of the iron cage, with the blade facing down. The reason we didn't see it was because of the fabric covering the cage. Also, the wooden statue kept the blade in place. It's true that the sickle's handle was thick, which made the statue wobble. But the statue's weight kept it from falling over. Once everything was in place, if you stepped hard enough on the seesaw, Tenko's body would have shot upward and hit the blade on the top of the cage. This makes a lot more sense than what I was thinking because if you had just like hit it slightly underneath the cage, it wouldn't have held in place. She was bent over, meaning the sickle's blade would have connected with her neck. The six-inch sickle blade wasn't long enough to stab Tenko in her crouch position. But with the floorboard acting as a seesaw, it could compensate for the blade's length. Bringing the victim to the sickle, rather than bringing the sickle to the victim. That's definitely an unorthodox idea. It's crazy. It would explain how Tenko got stabbed while she was in the cage. So the sound we heard was the culprit stomping on the floorboard. That impact made floorboard come loose. Looks like we got ourselves a good old-fashioned seesaw homicide. Wait, what the hell's a seesaw homicide? That's fucking crazy! The craziness is what really makes the killing game fun, you know? They can't get away with murder the normal way, so they gotta think outside the box. Kudos, culprit! You did a great job keeping me entertained. Indeed. Well played, Himiko. Yeah? <laughs> it was you, wasn't it? The one behind the seesaw homicide. <laughs> yeah, right. You wish. Why her? Because she's the only one capable of carrying out this plan. Only one? Why is that? Because this seesaw homicide required its location to be prepared beforehand. By cutting the cross piece beneath the floorboard, you mean? Then the culprit would need to lure their victim into the prepared room. That is why you chose that room for the seance. Is it not, Himiko? No, 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 no. I'm not doing this flashback. I already know. You liar. Oh yeah! Himiko was the one who chose the site for the seance! She likely found out about my plans for the seance somehow. <laughs> you were quite vocal about the seance, Kyo. You even had instructions for it in your lab. Our culprit, Himiko, prepared her seesaw trap ahead of time. Then she waited for me to host the seance, and suggested the middle room. She led us all into holding the seance right where she wanted it. Then, she killed Tenko. All according to plan. That's a lie, right? The Himiko did such a thing? I would never believe it. In the end, Himiko, who Tenko cherished and loved, tragically killed her. Kokichi, you know this is wrong. Right. We don't know that, right? He's wrong, right, Himiko? Himiko would never kill Tenko, right? Kill Tenko? I killed Tenko? Himiko? What's wrong, Himiko? It is true that using the middle room was Himiko's idea. But does that really mean that Himiko really killed Tenko? Would something like that really happen? Something so cruel? Never. <laughs> yeah, right. Never.